so it's a Sunday afternoon. We're kind of gearing up for the next week. I guess it's the beginning of September 2022. Um, trying to get some things together for the next week. Uh, one thing we want to do a short video on is just mentioning our quick ships that we've been listing on our website recently. We usually list about five guns at a time or so. And usually those are uh, stocks that have some minor uh, defect or um, sometimes just a cosmetic issue. They don't meet our first grade guns or our regular stocks that sell first grade stocks. But um, you know, they're often very, very usable. And uh, we discount those, we ship them immediately. So uh, you get something that's very usable, save a few bucks and not have to wait for it. Wanted to introduce that to you today. Uh, let's see what we have here for the quick ships coming up this week. Here's a very beautiful piece of maple, a lot of curl and figure. But here you see this uh, could be heartwood. Although it also could be a stain from worm damage, but um, I'm not exactly sure which it is. It's probably a little streak of heartwood that looks like to me. I don't see any worm holes. Uh, and usually when you have a little bit like this, if you stain it, you probably won't notice it that much. Probably won't be very visible. I'll probably try to bleach it a little bit too. Try to tone it down. But again, a very beautiful piece of piece of maple with nice uh, medium curl throughout. It should take a very beautiful stain. What's up next? Here's a mountain rifle with even stronger curl. To me, this feels like this could be sugar maple. I'm not sure whether it is, but it's very heavy, so it could be sugar maple. Very strong curl, and it has some little bark inclusions up here. And there, as far as bark inclusions go, they're fairly minor. Uh, I'll probably put a little CA glue, cyanoacrylate glue, in in those little uh, cracks along the bark. I think it's plenty strong. I don't see any weakness in the stock, so should make a very, very beautiful stock. I like them real heavy and dense. And uh, again, it'll be available at a discount. Next. Here is another stock that has medium curl. It has a heartwood patch right in here. Now, if it were staying fairly dark, you probably won't see it. You may see it a little bit. Uh, you'll probably try to bleach it out a bit as well. Sometimes heartwood has cracks with it. This doesn't look too bad. It's pretty good. Should make a again a nice stock, and this one will be pretty affordable for somebody. Here's another interesting stock. It has a, a subtle figure. It's, um, uh, I don't know how to exactly describe it. It's not just curl, it's more of like a kind of a fleck figure or maybe a little bit of a bird's eye, start of a bird's eye figure. It's not real strong, it's pretty subtle, but still, still neat. And the problem with this stock is that there wasn't enough material on the top of the tang area for the stock to clean up. So in order to uh, make this one work, I'll probably glue on a little piece. And uh, done well, it probably won't be too noticeable at all. So those are some examples. We also talked about, we have quite a number of ash stocks or mountain rifles. So all this, this whole rack is ash stocks. This ash is, isn't plain ash. There are a few plain stocks, but mostly it's not plain ash and it's not curly ash. 
It was some very uniquely figured boards that we got. Uh, the best way to describe it, I think, is bark pocket ash, where the surface of the wood is very has a, is very undulating. Um, sometimes there's some some grown in bark pockets, but it causes a, a pretty unique uh, unique figure. So I'll pull out the stock or two here and take a look at it. So there is a bit of curl with some of it, especially on the probably on the uh, quarter sawn face will be a little more curl this quarter sawn face here so there is some curl but there's a lot of these uh, sort of bubbles or I guess would be the best way to describe it now there are these uh, sometimes you get these ingrown bark pockets and like in this case I'll probably just stabilize that with CA glue is pro probably the best solution for it it's very, very unique, and you know, ash is uh, becoming less and less common, not very available. And I think it's very fitting. It'll look really cool on a mountain rifle. So I'll get some uh, some alcohol or solvent of some kind and put it on the wood here so you can see what it looks like. So this will evaporate, but just enhance the grain so you can kind of see what we're looking at. It's pretty awesome, doesn't it? have a little bit of curl mixed in. That's a pretty neat looking stock. Mm, to me it looks just beautiful on the mountain rifle. And these little bark pockets, once they're uh, filled with CA glue, I, I don't think they'll even hardly distract. So we'll probably try to get a bunch of these stalks this week, which is really something kind of special, to be honest. Pick up one more, take a look. mixed with it. Some really neat grain. And ash, by the way, stains beautifully with iron nitrate, or what people often call off the floor, but iron nitrate, it gives it a very, very nice color. And it's nice wood to work with, too. Some people say that ash is very difficult to work with, but I've not really experienced that. I think it works very well. Uh, showing off that ash brought to mind some maple that we have that has some bubbles or quilted figure we had we've sold a few of these but we have some more and it's again just very unique wood so this is hard maple and in practice what you see is you see basically like raised blisters on the surface of the, the tree right below the bark when you cut through them that's what it ends up looking like so it's some pretty unique looking stuff i've seen this in hard maple but i don't really ever see it in soft maple or red maple Let's see what the other side looks like. I think it's a little less vivid, but it still probably has some. Yeah, it has some. Just a unique, uh, unique stock. And this it happens to just be a solvent that uh, put on the wood. It show, shows the, uh, the figure and then it'll evaporate. But once you stain and finish it, the figure will come out. Here's, here's another one. There's a little bark inclusion there, but I don't think that's gonna be insignificant. I like that one a lot. It has some figure mixed with it too. Rather than just bubbles, it's got some blisters. Got some real neat figure mixed with it. Go to the other side, see what it looks like. Like I said, this is sugar maple, which is very nice to carve and to work. 
this is a good stock for somebody that doesn't necessarily want just stripe, but likes a little bit of more of a regular figure, which isn't too off, too common in, in uh, the maple we get anyway. So I guess uh, check out our website and uh, you'll see in the online store, quick ship stocks is one of the categories and you can see what we have available. I believe we send out an email and some of those are added to the store, so sign up if you would like to be notified when some of those are listed. And uh, yeah, you can save some bucks and get something fast and have a fun project uh, very much in time for the fall hunting season. Here's a uh, interesting slab of wood. It's again hard maple. We're just using sort of a workbench top, but with the intent that we may turn it into a table or something at some point. But it's, like I said, hard maple. It has curl, but it also has blisters as well. You see them show up as the bubbles, sort of like the stalks that were shown. This, you, this is right below the bark surface. And that's always a very good indicator of curl inside the tree. So we thought we'd do just a, a little bit of a walk around too, just kind of mention things that come to mind as we walk around. So I've done some posts on our sawmill and cutting up logs, um, though I don't think we've really done any real videos on it lately. So we've uh, begun buying curly maple logs and cutting them up rather than just trying to buy, uh, you know, already, already cut lumber because uh, the availability uh, of curly maple and the thicknesses we need isn't uh, sufficient, you know. So we, we basically have searched out logs and begun searching out logs and cutting them on our sawmill over here, a wood miser sawmill, and uh, hauling them on the gooseneck trailer there that you see. And it's working out pretty well. So that's uh, been a big part of our business lately. Lots of leftover slabs from the process. There's our stellar forklift, which really helps with the, the process of moving logs and lumber around. So it's an 8,500-pound forklift. This road forklift works very well for us. And our process is to cut up the the logs into planks, let the the planks dry for a period of time to get them around 20% moisture, a little less and then blank them out, sort of the rough profile of a, of a gun stock, and then dry them in a, a dehumidification kiln. Um, and uh, you know, then the blanks will be ready to use. So this is our dehumidification kiln. It has a load in it right now. Let's open it up and see what it looks like. Some with really good curl, some with a 
not as good curl, just sort of how it works. This wood here is dried wood, ready to be used in stocks. So this stuff we purchased dried, um, we have a few sources for that, but it, like I said, the availability and uh, thicknesses above eight quarter is pretty nil. There's a few, handful of pieces above eight quarter. A few great walnut pipes in there. How wide and big those are, beautiful. And more, more stock wood in here. We're in the process of trying to get things organized a little bit, but I guess that's, that's always the case. All the plywood is used for shipping boxes. Bunch of stocks or kits. Pretty much ready to go out the door. I might be waiting on a piece or two or something. Basically, about the door. Like some, some locks that are assembled, waiting to be inspected. It works pretty well. These are just great little locks. Extremely fast, work really smooth, These are nice ones. Just excellent locks and very, very historically correct. I don't think a lot of people appreciate the quality of these locks that we produce. Some do, but a lot of people don't really understand the difference between these and other commercial locks. But we, we, keep, we know the difference, so we, uh, we spend a lot of time and go through a lot of pains to make you know, very, very good locks. Some round face locks that are partially assembled. I think they're probably waiting on, waiting on some springs. We have some springs here. That are, wait, that are ready to be hardened. You harden those in a salt bath, a salt pot, molten salts, and uh, although salt pots or salt baths work extremely well, it's hard to keep the equipment going. It, um, the, the, the salt fumes are very corrosive and the, the, uh, the furnace itself tends to self-destruct very quickly, so it's kind of a pain in the ass to keep it going. These are a whole bunch of stocks. Some of them are seconds, some of them are maybe out the door. Mm. I'll show this or not. I'll look at it and see whether I like it or not at all. Nah, I don't think I'll show it. Well, I don't know. Here's a one of our stocks that I was just playing around with one day. I just decided I'd try to experiment and just do some incise carving alone. No, it's not done. It's just just partially done. So that means no background removal. Just um, basically cutting incise lines. So it's kind of fun. Maybe I'll work on a little more today. We'll see. So our Some new machinery, machinery we have that's going to be producing the uh, the Woods Runner kit is uh, very capable, and it'll be able to do some incise carving. So we'll probably offer that on our Woods Runner kit. So this is me trying to experiment a little bit with different designs and different ways of going incise carving in order that we can then program the computer to, to try to uh, you know not necessarily do the same designs 
but um, try to kind of develop strategies or, or, or just, just ways of doing the decoration. So it's going to be, it's going to, um, you know, the, this new equipment is pretty amazing in the precision that these new stocks will, will have. And, uh, you know, if we can do some carving on them too, it'll just, I'm just going to blow people's minds. It's something that really has never been done. I and mean, it'll just be, be pretty amazing is what it'll be. So that's, that's pretty exciting.